Welcome back to how to build an F-14 Tomcat. After working on a bunch of other stuff, I'm finally getting back to the F-14. You can see there's a workbench with some stuff at the far end of it. So what I'm going to do is a lot of you guys have asked for more hands-on videos on showing how to do some of the things I'm working with. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a hands-on video today. I uh, what I'm going to do is, in the video here, yes, it's the one little antenna right here at the trailing edge on the horizontal stabilizer. And you can see it's kind of, it's white there in the center and it matches the angle of the of the trailing edge of the horizontal stab. And it actually it tapers out into it here at the end and it gets fatter towards the trailing edge. A little dif difficult to make, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So the first thing you need, you need a nice set of three view drawings similar to these. The book that I just showed you the photo of is from Daco Publications. And you can see it comes with a whole set of three views, four views, and everything you could possibly need for the F-14. It does all the versions, the A through the D in one book. And on top of those, you also have another fold out with cockpit stuff and yet more three view drawings on that it shows you I mean this book is the treasure trove of information for the F-14 again Danny Corman's uncovering the F-14 ABD Tomcat from Deco Publications if you guys want an F-14 book that's just got a ton of pictures and some words this is the book to go for. I mean, it has got everything you could ever possibly think of. This is pretty much the book I use on 99% of all the detail work for the F-14. It's that good. All right, so back to the work. What I did is, since I'm modeling the F-14D and not the A, essentially they're the same. There's just a couple of differences. We won't get into that. But take your top view of the F-14, a nice set of dog calipers harbors freight special like eight bucks and you want to measure the width of that antenna and then using some math i came out the diameter of the antenna at the trailing edge is just under half an inch it's 0.45 inches so that's like seven sixteenths or somewhere around there then you do the exact same thing to get the distance for how long it is and then you do the exact same thing for how far away from the panel on it is. For positioning it on the stabilizer, just measure it from the panel on out, draw a line with a sharpie, and that's your position. And you'll notice the thickness of the trailing edge. I'll show you. You're probably wondering, well, how do you get something that's uh, on 7 16 diameter and it's tapered? over a fat trailing edge to actually still be 7 16 diameter. So what I did is I took just a plain old KNS brass tube and then I cut it on a, on a sander to the angle I needed so that when you put the angle up against the trailing edge it is pretty much right there at uh, right at the same angle you're looking for. Then from that point on, I took the cutoff wheel and a Dremel tool and a sander and I just notched it. And what this notch does is, you'll see it just slides right over the trailing edge. So that actually positions your antenna halves on the stab so that you have the same amount of curve top and bottom. So that's one step out of way too many. Now you're probably wondering, okay, you've got the positioning tool, but how do you get the taper? Well, I've already started working on a couple of these things, and here you'll see with the litho plate, I've already got the curve, and I've got the taper. So how did I do that? Simple, I just took a piece of unknown wood. I think it's like a, a soft pine or something. I measured down 0.1 inches. I came up with that, that measurement by putting your little positioning tool on the trailing edge and measuring from that to the highest point and that gives you that 0.1 inch and then using our measurements for length 
which I came out with 2.4 inches, which looking at the photos and a couple plastic models, it's a little off. So at that point, you just kind of have to go with what's correct and what looks correct. <laughs> Sometimes in scale modeling, it's better for it to be wrong and look right than it is for it to be right and look wrong, if that makes any sense to you guys. So I made a center line down from the edge, measured 1.5 inches. You can just see the mark right here. And then I took the exact same brass tube and I wrapped it with a piece of sandpaper. Then I took that sandpaper and I just positioned it to where you sand that taper and I have the little dish part out of it. So now you have a female portion of your mold for those little pieces of litho plate. So the next step with the litho is you have to anneal the litho to give it nice bendy. This is a piece of annealed litho and you can see how nice and easy it bends compared to unannealed which you bring it back and it springs. Again, annealed, not annealed. Big difference. So how do you go about doing that? Get your torch. Light it up, turn the temperature a little bit, and then take your piece of litho plate. This is the non-etched side as you get it, if it's been used. And here you see the etched side, how it's all nice and dark and gray. So using a pair of pliers, hold on to your litho plate. Then take your torch and just heat it up. And you'll actually watch as it heats up. There'll be a little bit of a change in color. There you can see the change in color. And you actually watch the plate start to curve after a few seconds these larger plates don't curve quite as much as the small ones do so I'll get a small one and I'll show you but you can see how it's changing color just from applying a little bit of heat to it and if you get it a little too hot you'll actually melt this stuff and it doesn't take much heat just a little bit too high and one spot too long and you can actually see right there the top center I'll just kind of boil a hole through it and you'll watch it, it'll just start to kind of burn like paper. Once you get that point, might as well just throw it away, start over. So what I was talking about with the, the smaller pieces, they'll actually curve a little bit. This one will probably call me a liar, but they do do it at times. There it goes. See how it actually curved just by applying heat to it. Alright, so now that you've got your annealed piece of litho and your molds and all that stuff, you're thinking, okay, we have a female mold, but what about our male mold? How do we go about making the male mold or getting the shape of it when we only have the female portion? Again, using your brass tube, take your piece of litho. I've got just a $1.50 Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's special wallpaper seam roller. Just make sure your piece of wood's nice and clean. Roll your litho out. And that just gets rid of any little imperfections or seams or dents or whatnot in it. And then take straight edge, push it straight up against there. Take your brass tube and just place it over in that female portion. Move it back and forth a little bit. That kind of work hardens the litho plate. And it looks like that one might not be any good. Just kind of move it back and forth. Leave it in place. Take your seam roller. Roll it back flat. Do that a couple of times. Then what I do is I pull it out and I flip it over and I run right along the seam from the top side just to make the seam a little bit more pronounced, or I should say the bend of it a little more pronounced. So what you do is when you're done, you come out and you've got a nice bold shaped piece of litho. So you can see this has got a little bit of an imperfection there at the top. You can see it really well at the bottom. This one. I'd still reuse it. It's not too bad. 
So that one's good. I've got our other four here made, or other three. So that's for the entire stabilizer there. Next thing we have to do is we've got to come up with the mounting flange for all this stuff. So just using a Sharpie and a compass. See, I've actually split the compass mount here in half so a Sharpie will fit in it. Put it down in there. Again, I've already done the math, and the math is 0.17 inches for the flange. I use 0.15 because it's close enough. So just take the compass with a Sharpie, position it up against your ruler to get the, the gap. And then just take the compass and trace this, the, uh, the seam for the antenna bulge on both sides. And then for the front curve part, just kind of, I just freehand it. And then this one will be used as a template for the other three. So then just taking a cheapo pair of scissors. Yes, I said scissors. Just run through and cut along your, your Sharpie line. And there you have one antenna bulge. As I was saying, using this one for a template, just go on the other ones, place it in position. Take your Sharpie and just trace around it. And you notice how easy the, the annealed litho plate cuts with the scissors. The non-annealed stuff is just as easy. You can take a piece of it and it just right through. It's it's like cutting paper. I mean, it's stuff super easy to work with. You can even cut. You can score it with an X-Acto knife, and after a couple of uh, scores, you can flex it once and it pops right out. Or you can just keep scoring it and it'll eventually cut all the way through. It does a number on X-Acto knife blades, so pretty much a couple of cuts and you gotta trash it. So a nice set of. Uh, cheap regular disposable razor blades are a much better option instead of number 11s. <sighs> Alright, well, that concludes this video. I will come back before I start applying these to the actual stabilizer so you guys can see that whole process. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and probably do one stabilizer, make sure my method works. <laughs> and then I'll get back with you guys with another video later today. See you in the shop.